Well, let's rip straight into it. Mike, you've been out and about today. How do you see things at this early stage playing out? Well, John, it's really been a gruelling campaign for both leaders. They've tried to define themselves to completely different policy platforms. Jay Weatherall's talking about infrastructure spending. That's a way of boosting jobs. Stephen Marshall says it's all about tax cuts for business, helping small business and getting it over the line. But, gee, the way you look at it, it's been day in, day out. They're both green at the job. First time they've both mm. been leaders going into an election campaign. It's against a very sad economy, I suppose you could say, with Holden closing and uh, other manufacturing going down the gurgler. Both leaders had a stormy ride to the top. Jay Weatherall's elevation came in a surprise attack on Mike Rann after almost a decade as Premier. A factional deal in mid-2011 stitched up the leadership as Rann was tapped on the shoulder and asked to make way. He reluctantly agreed but demanded his own terms and in his own time. That's it. I'm out of here. Adios, Adelaide. Arrivederci. Hasta la vista, baby. And one final word. I'll be back. Yes, John, let's have a look at the seat of... Mitchell, there it is. Alan Sibbins is the sitting member. Corey Wingard in the hunt and so is Chris Hanna. So, look, it's looking pretty good for Corey Wingard at this point. Um, I think he would be happy with that result. I think on a two-party preferred, though, it is, it is almost line ball, but you, you never know. Corey's a first-time candidate down there for the Liberal Party, also another former TV hack. There are a lot of them, aren't they? <laughs> so I tell you what, Corey, if, if, you're there, if you're there, I guess you're not going to get stage fright. Hey, guess what? You're on live TV. How are things going? Going very, very well. Smitho, you're too kind to call me a hack. I've been called a hack of a lot worse. Now, uh, Smitho, you want to talk to us about something in Ashford. We spoke to S Steph Key just before Paul Kiker. What strikes you about the Ashford Look, situation? Look, it was interesting, Jane, because the very, very first day of the campaign, Stephen Marshall hot-footed it down to, to Ashford. Terea Monteagle, who was the candidate down there, she's worked really hard as the Liberal candidate. Uh, but it was interesting that it was the same day as Jay Weatherall was launching Labor's official campaign. Remember the manifesto mm. that he carried mm. around every day of the campaign as if it was some sort of security blanket. So they put a lot of store in Ashford. They wanted to mm. win it. They had the ribbon cutting there. It was a big media event on the day. Now, if they do lose Ashford, or if Labor retains Ashford, mm -hmm. I would think the Libs would see that as almost a dagger through the heart because it was one of those strategic seats where you want to win it, you make a big deal about mm. it, mm. Uh, you've got a candidate there, look, to be honest with you, the Liberal candidate I, I don't think would have done anything wrong and would make a good politician. Mm. Whether she would want to front up and have another go next time round is anyone's guess, but that, that would be one that would really be smarting with the Liberals if they lose, which it would appear they will. Good evening. Racism allegations are dogging the Labor Party over the use of a Liberal candidate's surname. But the election battles also turned into a battle of the sounds as the two leaders become more vocal. A rare lighter moment in the campaign. Both leaders karaoke their way through Cold Chisel's anthem, Flame Trees. Neither crashed and burned completely. Do you know how Meatloaf felt at the grand final? I tell you what, it won't be uh, pretty listening, and I apologise to everybody. It's uh, tough. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get your heaven in an entirely different space. Labor's under pressure in another space, explaining a campaign fly with alleged racist overtones. It asks voters if they trust Habib. That's Australian-born Liberal candidate for elder Carolyn Habib. She says it's an unfair swipe at her Middle Eastern surname. I think it's a thinly veiled racist attack and it's offensive. But the Premier says it refers to her time as a Marian councillor. I'm not going to be lectured to by the Liberal Party on campaign ethics. So no apologies from you? Absolutely not. Well, that's disgraceful. That is absolutely disgraceful. The Libs just hope their election costings released tomorrow are on song. But he won't be around. Mike Smith and Seven News. The Premier's under fire for loudly shouting Holden workers' drinks, even though the lion's share was put on the taxpayers' tab. The opposition says Jay Weatherall was happy to splash public money around to make himself look good before the election. 
The Premier soaked up the moment last December. I'm shouting the bar. His pre-Christmas generosity followed a horrible month for Holden workers who will be axed when the plant closes. Did you mean you'd shout them or the taxpayer would shout uh, them? I contributed and uh, also there was some, some money that came from uh, the taxpayers as well, yeah. Do you know how much came from the taxpayers? Don't know. His government credit card shows a drinks bill of almost $1,500. Do you think that's excessive? Um, no, I think that's fair enough. If I was shouting a beer, it'd be coming out of my pocket, though. How Taking much did you put in from your own pocket? I'm not sure. And neither is the hotel. A senior staff member told Seven News they clearly remember a credit card payment but can't recall the Premier handing over his own money. Must be able to remember. Oh, it was a couple hundred bucks, I don't know what it was. The Premier's office now says he later chipped in $500 off a total bill of almost 2000 That he's dressed it up in the pre-election period as something else. So here he is being the good bloke, uh, uh, like me, support me. The same government credit card also shows media Christmas drinks of $2,000. Mike Smithson, 7 News.